welcome back to the Gun Lake Paddle Sports channel. I have a good one for you today. I'm pretty excited about this. It just came and this is the Planar 2D 12 volt portable diesel heater. I've been thinking about this for a couple of years. Did a lot of uh, YouTube video watching on the different models that are available out there. Saw a lot of the Chinese models that cost a ton less than this does. Uh, but having a reliable heat source here in Michigan, it's closing in on the end of November. Uh, very important that you can trust something that is going to supply you heat all night in your small camper or your vehicle, or even your tent, but uh, something that's going to have a good heat exchanger, a good exhaust fuel delivery system. This costs a lot more than the Chinese models do. I'm not uh, employed in any way, shape, or form or benefiting from this, but uh, I just felt it was good to have the nicer product. It comes in a case. It's got a double latch on the top, weatherproof case, good rubber seal around here you might not be able to see. When you open it up, get a, a laminated uh, sheet here that is all about heater operation. Very nice. Oh, it also uh, has the information of the place that services the U.S. and uh, it's Planar Marine and Truck Air Heaters Limited from uh, Surrey, B.C., Canada. And I asked these guys some questions by email prior to making the purchase and I found that I had almost instant response from uh, a human being that you could you know you could relate to and, and get some good and solid information from so I was pretty impressed by the company before I ever pulled the trigger on this the uh, unit is made by a place called Auto Term and it, uh, it is made in Europe and distributed through Canada to the United States most of these have a very similar looking heat box. The uh, warm air comes out this side and you connect your hose to it right here. I ordered the 10 foot hose instead of the 5 foot hose. It was a little more money but I thought it was worth it because I might want to camp in my van on any given day. I might want to camp in a tent or I might take out one of our micro light trailers uh, to do a demo with and I thought I could just take something along in a briefcase, take along enough diesel fuel to fill the tank here and maybe a couple of roto packs to back me up. And I think that this is going to be a longer term solution with less equipment than the propane heaters that we currently have available in some of the larger micro light trailers but I don't have a propane heater in my van, and I don't have a propane heater in some of the smaller micro light trailers that we make. So I was really hoping that, that this turns out to be a good uh, choice for multiple use and easy to uh, cart around. I think it weighs maybe just a little bit north of 20 pounds, but it's really quite easy to lift. I'm sure with a load of diesel fuel in it, that changes a bit. Connections happen on the back of the case. Here, you get a little, kind of like a key fob, sort of, and it has fan speed and heat on or heat off. So you can you can use this, from what I read, as, a, as just a, a fan, blowing some air through the tube into your cabin, and you can adjust the intensity of the heat with the dial knob. One of the things that I thought was really good about Planar. Uh, I have history in the auto industry and a good connection that's out in the weather like this here with the, with the rubber seal on it, uh, very important. So this, this connection uh, is the one that goes right to the battery, has uh, simple eyelets for positive and negative, a nice long connection piece there. And this one is the one that connects to the key fob call it a key fob. It also has a nice sealed connection. 
for bringing this inside the cabin with you. From what I understand, the air temperature coming out of the end of the hose is uh, a little over 100 degrees when it's running full blast. I've seen videos where people have them, you know, just zipped into their tent window. So I'm not planning on intense heat on the pipe itself. And that way I should be able to run it in a side window of a micro light trailer, in the side window of my van and just plug the rest of the window up with, with some foam or uh, a swimmy tube or something like that. So I'm hoping to make it real easy where I can just go from place to place, vehicle to vehicle without a whole lot of hassle. So I'm going to pause here and get this thing fired up, get some diesel fuel in it, and uh, see what it acts like. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We've got the unit fired up and started easily. No complications. Connected the positive and negative terminals of the battery to the machine. Connected the little key fob to the machine. I turned it up all the way and I simply pressed the heat lever one time and it fired up. Part of the instructions were to make sure that the uh, fuel valve was open. Uh, I might have missed it when I read through the directions the first time, but it doesn't tell you which way to turn it to make it open. So uh, I just kind of put it in the middle and it's working. I've got a thermostat connected to, or right next to, the uh, end of the heat pipe. I've also got my doors open. This is a really large building, but I've got good ventilation coming through here. The doors open behind me. Uh, operating them in the building is not recommended. For this demonstration, we're only going to be in here for a short time. So right at the end of the pipe, I've got a reading right now on my thermostat of 90 degrees, and it's only been running just a few minutes. You can probably hear it. I hear the exhaust noise coming out of here. I hear a little bit of clicking going on in here. That's probably the fuel pump, I'm thinking. Uh, but I'm still talking to you quite easily here. It's, uh, it's not overwhelming by any stretch. And even if it was outside of a tent, I don't think it would be disruptive to a person's sleep. Uh, so far, so good, really satisfied. Uh, tomorrow, we'll get a micro light trailer out. We'll do a heat test in there. We'll try to determine how much fuel it burns per hour. Uh, they told it to me in the instructions. I can't remember right offhand, but we'll get a handle on that. So stay tuned and we'll do some fuel testing on this unit. Welcome back. We're getting set up to do the planar diesel heater fuel consumption test and a test of how warm it actually makes something of this size on a fairly cold day. We finally got some cooler weather. It's windy outside, it's getting dark soon, and it's uh, probably somewhere in the 30s. We'll take a look at a thermometer in a little bit and see but that's perfect for the test that we want to do tonight. So this is a Microlite Cargo Light Extreme Stretch and it's fresh off of uh, the production floor. It's a beauty, it's our display model. Uh, most recent one, silver color, black on the bottom. And I've got some stuff hanging out the side here. The black pipe that you see will connect directly to the diesel heater the lead that's coming out the window is the lead that will connect to the heater that controls the temperature and the on off switch and then the lead that's connected to the battery with the fuse on it will also plug directly into the planar heater and that is the power source. I rigged this up just really quickly with what I happen to have on hand if I was uh, going to do this more permanent. If this test works out, I, I will do it more permanent. We'll probably drill a hole in the wall or the side of the trailer and have a screw-in entry port for the, um, for the pipe that transmits the heat from the heater into the cabin. But for now, I have it strung through the window along the side of the top of the bunk and just sort of pointing down at the floor. 
I have the uh, controller wire over there um, by the door so it's easy to get at. One thing we always tell our customers when it comes to cold camping and micro light trailers because the construction is aluminum and the floor is just one solid piece of aluminum to put something on it to cover so that you're not losing all your heat through the floor. And so I threw a piece of plywood I had laying around down there, put the bed cushions down there, a couple of rugs I had laying around, so hopefully that will um, insulate the floor properly. As far as bringing the pipe in, I brought it in through the window and I took one of our window caddy shades, which uh, normally are just made to be, be curtains like this, and uh, I used it to try to keep out as much of the weather as possible just for a quick solution uh, to this test. And it's cracked open a bit, so the wind's going to come in there, but I still think that with the amount of heat that the heater puts out, even though we've got some pretty serious gaps here, we're still going to maintain a decent temperature inside of the trailer. So on the other side of the shop, I'm getting ready to do the fuel consumption test, and I'm going to put two of uh, these bottles of diesel fuel in the tank, and that will equal about a half a gallon filled them up with the right uh, quantity there so it equals a half a gallon when we put two about that full into the tank and we'll get it fired up get some heat pumping and we'll hang with this until the fuel has you know been used a good deal so we can get an idea of how much does a half a gallon of diesel fuel how long on high will it will it work all night long it should by my count uh, by my uh, figuring but uh, we want to see on high what it'll do and then of course what it will do inside the camper as far as keeping you comfortable and if this works we've got a real viable solution here and an alternative to propane and some of the other sources that have been common to uh, campers up till this point so stay tuned we'll get her fired up all right here we are we've got the trailer outside and uh, the heater is going and it was so easy to start i pushed the button on the controller just like it said just one time and it started up you can you can hear it running you can see the level of diesel fuel hopefully in the tank it's not much just on that bottom third there a little bit is in there half a gallon it's windy outside But the heat in the trailer is extremely noticeable and if you can hear anything at all you can hear just a little bit of heat coming out of that pipe the controller is set on high i've got the dial uh, all the way turned to high so just followed the easy to read instructions we've just turned it on and it's already well past 50 in here Outside. There we go. It's a little bit over 30 degrees. So we started with a trailer that was a little bit warm already because I had it in the shop. So uh, we'll let it run for a little while and come back after an hour or so and see how it's doing, see how the fuel consumption's doing. Get back with you. All right, we're inside the camper. Taking a look at the temperature, if I can get this right, there we go. It's a solid 65 degrees in here. Comfortable, nice. I'm in shirt sleeves, feels good. I would show you the fuel tank, but there's really no noticeable difference in it yet. started at uh, about 10 minutes to 5 it's now about 7 o'clock it's snowing in the counties all around us and so it's plenty windy outside the temperature outside is holding right about 32 degrees so right at freezing we're doing 65 in here we're doing 32 outside um, I think that's pretty good you may not be able to see it from here, but there's a pretty good gap right in this area here where we're coming through that open window. Just nothing but a piece of fabric there. 
uh, keeping out the cold air. I don't feel any draft coming in there, but with a more permanent situation, I think uh, we could probably bring it up to 70 degrees in here pretty easy on a 32 degree night. The outside pipe is also uninsulated and I'm thinking that probably could put some insulation around that, I don't know, four foot section of pipe or so that's reaching from the heater to the trailer to uh, make the temperature that comes out of here even warmer. But man, that's nice. You don't have to worry about this tube burning anything or causing any fire for you. I mean, you can easily put your hand on it. It's just nice and warm. It's not hot. But it is putting out some velocity that I'll demonstrate with the slider. I mean, it blows it right out. It, it's a nice stream of warm air. And uh, the little spots of floor that are exposed here are just, you know, really cold. Uh, sleeping in here this evening would be very comfortable. No problem at all. So I'll get back with you in a few more hours. I'm going to conclude this somewhere around 10 o'clock tonight. At that point, I'm going to be ready for bed. So uh, we'll see what the fuel situation looks like. Should be able to give a pretty good estimate of the fuel consumption that we're going to use in a typical evening of cold weather. Talk to you later. Okay, we're back out here four hours into our test. It's about 10 minutes to 9. And I think I'm going to call it a night because I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. I'll get close to the tank here. If you saw the tank in the earlier video, I hope you can see where the fuel level is. It's way down towards the bottom. Probably about half of what we started with. Remember, we started with only one half a gallon of diesel fuel. So I think it's safe to say that this unit will run for pretty close to eight hours on a half a gallon of fuel. Matter of fact, when it gets down that low, I just heard the unit turn off. So uh, I think it has a low fuel warning system on it. It turned off just as we were talking. Get in the trailer here and we'll turn off the unit. One click on the switch. pretty good timing it bumped up to about 67 degrees inside the cabin so it picked up two degrees we're still holding it about 32 degrees outside and uh, I would say that's really good use of fuel on high speed if you had that tank full I suspect it holds around three gallons. I haven't tried to fill it up yet. So if you had three gallons in the tank and you took along another three to five gallons, you'd have so much fuel for a multi-day trip if you're hunting or something and you just want to take the edge off. Maybe you turn it on low during the day or you shut it off and then turn it on at night. Uh, you could be out there a long time with a reasonable supply of diesel fuel. I'm totally pleased at this point I'm going to do some more modifications. I'm going to drill a hole in the side of this trailer or the bottom and bring that pipe up. I'm going to contact Planar about insulating that pipe a little bit for even better heat retention. And uh, we'll do some more follow up videos on this coming up. So, so long for the evening. I will look forward to doing some more on this at a later time. Good night.